Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to part five of the Slither.io tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to continue to work on our food spray, and it should be somewhat of a short episode. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. So, so far, we have a pretty cool game. You can see uh, we have food that gets populated. We can hold down to speed up, and we have a cool pulsing effect. Um, and the first thing we want to do is make sure that our food doesn't disappear, because right now, we are only spawning something like uh, 50, I believe, right here. And once those 50 are eaten by our snake, no more are spawned. So uh, maybe a user would eat up all the food and then there's nowhere else to go. So you wanna make sure that there's always some number of uh, food. And for uh, this tutorial's sake, we're gonna choose the number of 100 and make sure that we always have 100 food available in our, uh, in our snake's world. Right, so we need to keep track of the number of foods. So we're gonna create a new variable. It's gonna be for all sprites. We're gonna call this food count. And what we're going to do is say when flag is clicked, let's set this food count uh, to zero because it starts with no zero. And then what we're gonna do is say when flag is clicked forever, and we can move this down. We're gonna say if the food count, which is the number of food available in our world, is, bring in the less than symbol. If it's less than 100, so this food count, if it's less than 100, then let's spawn a new clone, and let's change food count by one. So now as you can see, food will start to populate, and you can see this number reach 100, and it'll stop there. So now if I eat a food, no more is being spawned because our food count doesn't actually get reduced by one. So it's really important to do that. So um, in here, where we are uh, you know, handling the code for when the food uh, gets eaten by the snake, we need to reduce this food count by, uh, by one. So right here, we can say change food count by negative one. So if I just make this a little bit more organized here, uh, you can see that now, I'll let it go to 100, but if I go and if I eat this food, you can see it goes down to 99 for a second and comes back up. There's a little flicker in the variable, but that just means that it's actually working. And so food will continue to be respawned whenever we eat more food, and that way we never run out of food for our snake. All right, so the second thing I wanted to do in this episode was change this ghost effect really quickly, small uh, change from negative five to negative 10. Uh, so pick a random number from negative five to negative 10. And that's because uh, we want to have a variety in ghost effects and how bright they are. So that will uh, manage that. The next thing I wanna do is add a pulsing and glowing effect to this very same spray in our food. And the way uh, we're going to do this is by having a variable control the size of each food and then having that food increase and that size increase and that size decrease to have some uh, more interesting animations for our food because right now it's pretty boring for a random food to just be on there and not move at all. So as you may guess, we're gonna create a variable for this. Make sure you hit for this sprite only and we're going to call this uh, clone size. So when we spawn a new clone, we wanna set this clone size to some random number and it's going to be for our sakes, uh, a random number from 60 to 100. So then um, right here, we are going to, or uh, let's do it here. So as you can see, this number represents the size of our food, right? This 400 is just to make it, it's a little hack that we use to make it so that if our food is not on our stage, it'll hide instead of going to the boundaries. If you don't understand what that means, that's completely fine. Just, just you should have it 400, go to, and then 100. And so if we change this 100 to 10, just to show you guys that this does control the size of our food, you can see that they're super, super small. And same thing if we make it to 1000, right? So we actually want our newly created clone size to be put inside of this set size too. So now you can see that random sized uh, food will be spawned. So you can see that one's a lot smaller than this one, for example. But we want this to change because it'll be a cool animation that we can show the user. So it's pretty easy to do that. Let's drag in a forever loop. And let's drag in two repeats. 
and we can just drag in one and duplicate it later. So we're going to say repeat 20 times, change my clone size by one, and then repeat 20 times, change it by negative one. So as you can see, we start to get this pulsing effect that really replicates the real Slither.io game. And so I think that's super cool what we just added. So that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. We added some more edits to our food clone. And yeah, thanks for watching. See you guys soon.